Hello, I'm basically recording a very quick UV layout tutorial because I've never found a tutorial that is both concise and contains all the relevant information that somebody would need to start UV and UV layout if they have no experience. So this is going to be a really quick kind of start guide on how to use UV layout. I have this basic mesh in Maya and it's a low poly book made up of several different meshes. And the best way I've found to get all these several different mesh pieces into UV layout and have them still be usable is to select all the things you want to export, and you can probably do this in the outliner as well, but then just go to File, Export Selection. I'm going to put it on my desktop for now, and I'm just going to call it Book No UV, and then you can export that selection. And then you can jump straight over into UV layout. Uh, when you launch it up, this is the box that will show, and you can just press Load, and then load your mesh in and then UV Layout will open its 3D workspace. Um, in terms of navigation in UV Layout, the controls are very similar to Maya. It's middle mouse drag to pan, and then if you hold Alt and middle mouse, sorry, if you hold Alt and left click, you'll rotate, and then Alt and right click is zoom in and out. And then obviously you can do all your tumbling and all that kind of stuff like that, which is pretty useful. The workspace in UV Layout, particularly this 3D workspace, has several hotkeys that are essential on how to use this program. And the hotkeys work in that wherever your mouse is currently, you will affect that part. So the hotkeys that I use the most for UVing in the 3D workspace are W, C, U, 3, and D. Um, and they all have different purposes. But first things first, when I get a mesh into UV layout, the first thing I like to do is split it up and get rid of the parts that I don't want to work on at the moment. Because this kind of this clears the space and allows you to work more efficiently and you don't have to rotate around and move parts out of the way and stuff. And the workspace that I use to store all the parts that I'm not working on is the UV workspace. It's probably not good practice, but it works. So to get something from this 3D workspace into the UV workspace, you just hover over it and you press D and that will drop it down into the UV workspace. To view the UV workspace, as in to switch between this 3D one and the UV workspace, you can press U, and now you can see this UV tile, this is a one by one tile, so that's U1 and then V1, and here is the piece that we moved into the UV workspace. Some quick basics on navigation in the UV workspace. They are, the controls are essentially identical to the 3D workspace, although obviously you can't tumble, so it's middle mouse drag to move, and then Alt and right click to zoom in and out, and then Alt and left click does nothing. In regards to moving the individual UV objects, if you hold space and you middle mouse drag over an object, you will move it around, and if you hold space and you left click, you will rotate it, and if you hold space and right click it, you will scale it. Although one thing I would very much advise against doing in UV layout is scaling, because if you start scaling things, it can really mess things up. So do all your UV island scaling within another 3D application such as Maya or 3ds Max or whatever you're using because it is 100 times easier. So now we're going to go back into the 3D workspace by pressing U and we're just going to drop down all the other pieces that we don't want to currently work on. So we're going to drop those and this is all just by hovering the mouse over them and pressing D until you're left with the piece that you want to work on. Now the actual UVing in UV layout again works on where the mouse is currently based. And the two tools that are used for UVing are W and C. W being the weld tool and C being the cut tool. And then to apply any of these changes, you need to hit enter. So I'm gonna make my first cut in, now I want it to be in quite a hidden place, so I'm gonna choose this top corner because it'd be hidden by the spine of the book. So I'm gonna hover the mouse over and press C. And that gives you a little projected cut. Now red is a line that you have told it to explicitly cut and yellow is where UV layout will guess that you want to cut next. So say if I wanted to cut all the way around this middle and I press C on here, UV layout would assume, oh, that's a bit broken there because of my topology, that's fine, we can just weld those by pressing W. So say you wanted to cut all the way around the middle, you would hover over it and press C, and then UV layout will assume that you want to cut around in a full edge loop, and it will highlight these in yellow. To undo any of the ones that are in yellow, if you don't want them to be cut, you just hover the mouse over them and press W, and it will kind of cancel out that projection like that, so then you're left with just one face. But obviously I would never cut a mesh of this shape in that direction, so I'm just gonna weld that again by hovering over it and pressing W, and go back to my original selection, which was these ones. And then to actually perform the cut, 
you just press enter and it performs the cut based on where the mouse is so if you have two cuts there and there and your mouse is closest to this one when you press enter it will separate that piece and then again you can just press control Z to undo things it's quite simple so now that you've got the mesh that's cut and you want to get it down into the UV workspace you just hover over it and press D and once all of your mesh pieces are in the UV workspace, they will seemingly all come back into the 3D workspace. But that's, this isn't the actual 3D workspace. This is more of a kind of reviewing stage where you can see all the pieces. And once we've done some unfolding, these will become colored depending on how well they are unfolded. So let's go and unfold that piece that we cut. So we'll go into the UV workspace by pressing U. And then here are the rest of our pieces, which we don't want currently. So I'm just going to move those over there. And then this is space and middle mouse drag again. Ooh. Like that and then this is the piece that we want to work on now providing you've made your cuts correctly UVing should be quite simple you need to think about edge flow you need to think about where you want to hide your cuts and it should make things a hundred times easier the keys that can be used in the UVing workspace you can use W and C again as you can in the 3d workspace to weld and cut edges if you realize in the UV workspace that something doesn't line up properly or it won't unfold properly but you can also use F which is the flatten tool and that's the most important one and you can use R, which is the rectangle tool. There are some other little shortcuts that I'll go through as well that can make UVing a bit easier, but some of them are quite temperamental about when they do and don't work, so you have to be careful. So if we've cut this piece correctly, when we hover over it and press F, which is the flatten key, it should do its best. Now sometimes it'll stop, and that means that it's making such a drastic change that it wants to check with you whether it's okay to continue. And you'll see in the bottom left corner, it'll say left mouse button to flatten the box or enter to abort. And obviously I want this change to happen, so I'm just gonna left mouse click. And then I can continue flattening by hovering my mouse over it and holding F. And it'll just sort itself out quite nicely. Because it's quite a simple mesh, it does it quite well. And that's good. Okay, there we go. And if you know that you want your UV tile to be in a rectangle, this is where the R key comes into handy. The R key is the rectangle tool, and it's you have to use it sparingly. It's very careful about when it does and doesn't work. But if you hover over a mesh that you want to put inside of a rectangle and then press R, it'll lock it in a rectangle. And actually, this has done a pretty good job. Ideally, you want the entire surface of the mesh to be green. You don't want it to have any blue or red edges, because blue means that it doesn't have enough UV space, and red means it's overlapping. So I'm actually just going to hover over it and press F to flatten it further, make sure it's got the right space. So there we've got a little bit of squashed faces, but that's not too much of a problem. You can fix individual UV coordinates in something like Maya or 3ds Max, because I found that UV layout isn't so good at fixing individual points. And then we've got a red face up there, which means it's overlapping, so again we'll need to fix that in another 3D application. But that, for now, that's actually a pretty good job. So again, don't scale UV islands and UV layout, just move them to one side when you're done with them, so I'm actually just going to put that one there. And now we have all our other pieces, so I'm going to put one of them back into the 3D workspace by hovering over it, and we press D to get it into the UV workspace. And so to get it back up into the 3D workspace, you just hover over it and you press Shift D. If you think about it as levels, the 3D workspace is on the top, and then the UV workspace is below. So to change our view and go back into the 3D workspace, we can press U. And now here we are, and you can see that the mesh that we flattened is currently there. And so to change our view and go back into the UV workspace, we can just press U. But this will take us directly into review mode, where we can see anything that we've UV'd. And this here is the piece that we just UV'd. So these are all UV'd fine, these are all green. But obviously where it's red, there's some issues. And this is a really good tool to kind of check and make sure that everything is UV'd nicely. At the end, but we don't want to review this piece because we're still busy UVing the other pieces. So to get into edit mode, you just press E, and now here we are, and we're back in the 3D workspace with that piece that we just brought up from the UV workspace. So again, I'm just going to start performing some cuts. I think the best place to cut this would be probably down the side. Now the cuts are quite specific on where they allow you to go. You kind of have to be in the middle of an edge, otherwise it won't cut. There we go, and then. This is quite a tricky piece, so I'm going to go down this edge as well. Whoops. Go down this edge. There, maybe. Oh, it's not letting me UV. Not letting me cut even. It's quite temperamental. Hmm, that's strange. There we go. 
Uh, I'm just going to weld this one because I don't want it to cut all the way around. Okay. And then hopefully all those. Yeah, that lines up perfectly. So I'm just going to hit enter to cut these. So I can see what that looks like. And then I'm also going to go down this side as well. And then press enter. Oh, no. Before we do that, let's weld that one so that doesn't cut. And then press enter. And the keys I'm using here are obviously W, C, and Enter. And then once again, when you've cut the piece to an adequate level, you just hover over it and press D, and you'll drop it down into the 3D workspace, but into the UV workspace, sorry. But all my pieces are now in there, so it's showing me review mode, but that's not a problem. You press U to go back into the UV workspace. And the piece we just cut is here. And then we're just going to hover over it and press F to unfold. And there we go. Did a pretty good job actually. I'm actually going to put this one in a rectangle because obviously it is a rectangular shape, so I'm just going to hit hover over it and hit R. And then let's flatten it out some more. And I think that has done a pretty good job. Just rotate by Alt and sorry, space and middle mouse. And then there we go. And that's all in place. We don't have many errors. And if you want to cut something while you're in the UV space, again, it's quite simple. You just hover over and press C, and then press Enter. And then you can flatten it some more. Just cut that face and press Enter. There we go. And then flatten it again, and it should rectify some of the edges. There we go. I'd rather have blue than red, that's for sure. So you kind of have to find a little balance between blue and red faces. Ideally, you want everything to be green, but it's unlikely that a mesh is ever going to be all green. I'm actually just going to re-weld those. And then further even, flatten them even. And that's that. So in terms of UV tile management, say I've flattened all these pieces, I'm not going to do it because obviously it would take too long, but if I've flattened all of them, then you can see that now we've got this dotted edge along here. And that's because while this is one UV tile, the coordinates at this point in the corner would be U1, V1. Up here, the coordinates would be U1, V2, because this is a second tile above. Ideally, unless you're using a multi-tile workflow, you want everything to be in one tile. But like I said, don't do any scaling in UV layout because it's terrible at scaling. So what you could do is split pieces even further by hovering over and pressing C. And then C again, all the way across. And then flatten that one with F. And now I've broken this into two pieces. I can now put them on there. But obviously this means that there will now be a seam here, which you might not necessarily want. So it's a case of whether or not you want seams to be well hidden, or if they're along corners, you could maybe get away with it, but you don't really want to be splitting things. You should ideally be doing scaling, but not in UV layout. So I'm just going to switch back into the 3D workspace now, but because all my pieces are in the UV workspace, it'll show me review mode when I press U. And here we are in review mode. And the pieces that we UV'd are actually doing pretty good. They're all appearing to be green on most of the faces, which is important. And obviously these faces are the ones that are going to be seen, and so are all of these ones, so that's actually a pretty good job. And then in terms of exporting these objects and saving them, you just come across over into here and press save. And then it'll put you in the directory where the object is, and I'm just going to save this as book, UV, and press save. And then if I just switch over back into Maya quickly and import that object that I just made, the UV'd one, open up the outliner so you can see the mesh. So now we have the two meshes. This is my original mesh made up of separate pieces, and then this is my mesh that isn't made into one strong piece by in one single piece by UV layout. What you can do is break them up. If you just go mesh separate, it'll break it up into the individual pieces again. And here you also have now hopefully all the UVs laid out properly. So to check that, you can just select the entire mesh and go Edit UVs, UV Texture Editor, and there you can see the UVs from UV Layout all lined up perfectly. It's got some additional tiles on there because that's the workflow I like to use, but if you open Maya, these probably won't be here. So let's just select some individual pieces and we can see. Yeah. And then obviously, if you want to do any scaling, just press F12 to go into UV mode and you can select all the points and then I've got soft select turned on, so I'll just press B to turn that off quickly. And then you can do all your scaling in Maya. You can also do some rotating. And then if you tell it to shade the UVs by going image, shade UVs, you can also see any errors. So here we've got some errors, and then Maya can probably handle something this small, so I'm just going to select all those points. Open up the unfold tool, and then just unfold them. And then you can do some manual tweaking to line things up to make sure there's no errors. Like that. 
And I'm just going to apply a quick test of material to make sure that everything's worked out okay. So I'm going to assign a new material. Let's use a Lambert. And we're going to find a UV tile that I have saved somewhere. UV tile. And then press 6 to go into shaded mode. And now you can see the pieces that we UV'd, which was the spine. is all laid out perfectly. The grid is the right size. Everything matches. And along here, there's a little bit of stretching in the middle. Ideally, you want this to be a straight line, but again, that's nothing that Maya can't fix. And then these all line up pretty good as well. So there you have it. The basics of UV layout. I hope this was useful, and uh, thank you very much for watching.